Welcome to DJN TV and Tuesday night with Ben Stowe. Now introducing the one and only Ben Stowe. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, we are live. Yay. <sighs> you know, sometimes that feels like the most difficult part of the show. Just getting the ball rolling. <laughs> just, just getting things. Yes. Getting the connections all made and making sure we're talking to the right people out there and Making sure. I mean, not. you have like a virtual TV studio there, and you're simul streaming to like, you know, six different places. Today. And you have viewers in I don't know how many different countries. You yeah, know, yeah so. tonight, tonight we're kind of going, going. Uh, I have the easy job. I just sit over here and kind of pop off. So you know. Yeah, it. yeah we should have we should have quite a bit uh, quite a bit going out out there tonight. So, uh, thank you guys for being with us. Uh, Ben, tonight I want to try something a little bit different. We haven't done a show like this before where we're going to, it's going to be me asking questions. All right. That, yeah, that will be new. Yeah, uh, that'll, be, that'll be new. And, 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 it'll, and the answers will be astounding answers, I'm sure. Well, that would be new. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, let's see, we got uh, quite a few people already jumped in. Uh, Dan is there, Gus, I saw Robin, uh, Jimmy's with us, Day is with us, uh, all, all, out, all out on YouTube. So thank you for being with us tonight. The gang is all back. Yep, I they, love it. They are all there. So, so tonight, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through a menu for from a microphone system. This is, the one that we're going to be looking at is the RE three system here from electro voice um electro voice of course is a big sponsor and a great industry uh one of the, the icons of the industry and uh, we're going to be looking at one of their microphone systems tonight in depth with the menus because for a lot of us when we have those wireless microphones we get those and we, we start looking through all these different things and it becomes kind of intimidating i at times long for those days where it was like turn on the the you know the fm transmitting or receiver on your radio shack mic and turn on the fm microphone and it just clicked and it, it just connected and but then sometimes it didn't work too well you know i hear that from people and I, to me it kind of reminds me of if you ever looked at the steering wheel of a formula one race car you know there are like a bazillion buttons on the steering wheel and displays uh and and, and so the moral of the story is that those formula one race cars are incredibly complex machines and the driver has a lot of resources at their fingertips to change the way the car handles even turn to turn and that's what gives them the high performance they need and that's really kind of where we're headed i think wireless systems have gotten easier to use i know some people might say oh, i don't believe it they really have i think gotten easier to use but moreover they've gotten more powerful you know, uh, and as the spectrum has gotten tighter and as more and more things have gotten wireless, those days where you could have a single channel, non-frequency agile wireless, you could just turn on and it would just work most of the time, those days are gone. So these menu settings, uh, I, I realize they can be frustrating and confounding. Uh, and in fact, you'll probably see me struggle a little bit here because there are so many different wireless systems out there. I, I shouldn't say struggle, but I may be... Uh, you know, there's 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 certain terms, John, where, sure. you know, one wireless company calls it this wireless company B calls it that. Uh, but at the end of the day, they do the same thing. And those are the the tools that are necessary to navigate an increasingly complex and crowded wireless spectrum. So 
uh, I guess just embrace the high performance nature of these new wireless devices we have. Um, that said, uh, as you were showing the box being EV, I, I just happened to think that probably some people might have the reaction of, wow, I didn't know EV made microphones. Uh, so it's a fun little bit of history here. EV actually started as a mic company. Uh, and in fact, they even used to make the wireless mics for another probably better known mic company out there. Uh, I'm sure they regret that, <laughs> uh, but I won't say who. Uh, and uh, I, I think uh, I think Electro Voice was founded in like 1928. They're coming up on 100 years. Uh, wow. So they've been making microphones uh, actually for a very long time. Hmm. Uh, and they make really, really fantastic mics. So, um, in fact, and, and you know, Mike Dussault would be so proud of me for remembering all this stuff. Yeah, no kidding. To, Honestly, John, viewers, I'd love to tell you I researched all this for the show. I, 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 I didn't. I just remembered it when John showed the box. I'm like, oh, yeah. So apparently the EV Kool-Aid is good Kool-Aid. Uh, but the uh, even the microphones inside the astronauts' helmets when they landed on the moon were EV mics. So there we go. Uh, on with the uh, questions that you have. More useless trivia at 11. Uh, let's just, here we go, pop that up. So, so what we're looking at is the front of the RE3 receiver okay. here i don't have mm -hmm. antennas hooked up to it because they were kind of clumsy on my desk here so you won't need them for the I mean, yeah you won't need them so so what are we what am i looking at here for buttons before we go into the actual menu well uh if, if maybe back it up just a little bit it's a little bit blurry uh, yeah that's better uh, whoa, whoa. let's see if i can do this <laughs> it's, i feel like the microphone's like right in my face you know it's kind of it's weird how the virtual anyway so what we see uh, on the far left, that big circle, that is an infrared emitter. And uh, that is how we're going to sync the mic. It's actually light, infrared light, like a TV remote, that's going to allow the transmitter and the receiver to send information back and forth. Um, and uh, the changes that we make on the receiver, the base station here, will then be propagated over to the transmitter. Hmm. Because if you think about the arrangement, normally in a radio sense, the transmitter is sending to the receiver. So in this case, we want to send from the receiver back and there's no radio connection there. We're going to do it with light. Um, and the button you see just to the right of that that says sync, that's the button that actuates that process. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then what's really neat about the scan button on the EVs in particular, almost every modern frequency agile wireless system has scan. Uh, but I just like that they put this right on front, <laughs> you know, it's like because, you know, people ask me when they buy wireless systems, should I be doing this at every venue? Yeah, you should. Uh, you know, that's going to take a snapshot of the RF spectrum in your space. It's going to identify uh, potential points of interference and it's going to avoid them. So mm -hmm. we should do it every time. And, and by putting this button right on the front, they've made that very, very, very easy. Um, now I am going from memory here. And uh, those of you who own and use the RE3 systems regularly, again, if I fumble this a little bit, how about a little grace? Uh, <laughs> ah, you know what, just go ahead and trash me in. So I don't care, I got, I got thick skin. I believe if you press and release the scan button, it brings up a scan menu. And if you press and hold it, it just goes right to a scan. That okay. is my recollection. Of well, that we'll works. try that in just a little bit here. So obviously, right. maybe I should have just waited until you tried it. And then yeah. I could have just played like I knew. Yeah, yeah, the meter. So we got a couple of meters and then I got a couple of things okay. on the other side. Let's go back to the meters for a second. Oh, oh, we're and we're going to see these more as we get into the process. But the left meter is RF, which is radio frequency. That's showing us the strength of our radio signal. And even without antennas, you'll notice at short range, those meters are going to probably top out. Uh, and the second one is our audio strength. So it's showing us the uh, strength of the signal coming in from our transmitter in terms of audio level. Excellent. And then uh, let's slide it over just a little bit farther so we can see the other side because we just got a couple more buttons, I believe. Yes. Well, I mean, up, down, and set are about as self-explanatory as you can get. And that uh, one on the far right's a little, little sketchy for me here. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah well, it's it's the power. That's that's the uh, that's the. Uh, oh, that's the car the starter. The tech support reset button. <laughs> yes, the tech. Uh, that's what, well. Let's push the tech support reset button and let's see what happens when we push said button. All right, boots up nice and fast. So basically, if we look at the uh, display here, what we can see, uh, you can see that there is an antenna symbol on the upper left-hand side of the display, and it's indicating there is no mic connected. It's showing us the uh, level setting is at zero dB, and and of course nothing to sync. Uh, upper right is showing us the name of the mic. We can change the name of this unit. And then down below, it's showing us the frequency information. And there are two different ways we can set frequencies on these. There are preset groups and channels. 
Uh, and actually, let me pull this up real quick. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do this. Yeah, I'm sorry. You mentioned you mentioned a person could change the microphone. So let's say if I had a windscreen on this microphone, a blue windscreen, could I change this to the to be called blue? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see here. Um, I'm, I'm looking for a frequency chart. I, I have not actually changed the name of any RE3s, uh, so I am, I'm just going under the belief that you can, mm -hmm. um, a strong belief, but you can on many others. So let me just, uh, let me just confirm that real quick. But what I'm looking to, uh, to find here is a frequency chart. Uh, and then maybe we'll just dive into that name thing after a bit. Sure. And, uh, and we may I'll find it when it. we're going through the menus and such also. Yeah, I think we will. Um, I believe it's under the config menu, but uh, we're showing people why this show is free. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, here I do I'm just have gonna show this. what else is lit up here, and the sink is lit. Just trying to figure out. Oh, there we go. That's what I'm trying to do. Ha! <laughs> this is live TV, folks. Yeah, this is it's as real as it gets. I'm going to open this in a uh, in a PDF viewer so I can show you this. Maybe. <laughs> Goodness gracious. You know, I do sometimes watch our shows and I go back and I look and I realize how absolutely ridiculous I look when I'm standing here staring at a screen. <laughs> Person's trying to find that one one particular. Where is it? I don't know. And it's like oh, Tre oh. Trevor's there cheering for us. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you, Trevor. So, uh, well. all right, I'm going to go ahead and share this screen real quick here. So what we can see, and I, well, I had to I had to figure out if you had five H or five L, which I could see it was five H by the uh, frequency. So then I wanted it to match. So it, basically, oh. if we look here, you can see that you are on G1 CH1, which is Group One, Channel One. And if we go to this frequency chart, we can see that group one, channel one, is as it's shown on your display, 560.325. Now, this, so, this particular, you mentioned that this is 5H. Is that what you said? 5H, correct. Now, that, um, that was the one that, was, uh, that you guys kind of picked for our area, the, the area in which I work, because you kind of, mm -hmm. is that, that's the reasoning behind that specific one being in my hands, correct? Yes, and if you look, you can see NTSC and PAL TV channels here, but you can see, you know, what TV channels are occupied uh, by those frequencies, you know, and we can see here that it says here it's TV channels 29 through 34. So uh, basically that's what we're doing. We're looking to see what is already existing in your area. Uh, and in your area, it's not, not as bad, uh, you know, certainly Gray Eagle, even Minneapolis, as it is in, in other markets like Chicago, very crowded, Denver, very crowded, Atlanta, very crowded, uh, Seattle, very crowded, you know. So we're, we're helping choose the right band to work best in your area to give you the most open channels. Because at the end of the day, you can call it groups and channels or you can call it numeric frequency value, but at the end of the day, it is just radio frequency. Uh, and in fact, John, you should link the show we did that basically says, uh, you know, why don't my, why, my mics work anymore? Yeah. Uh, I think that really, we really covered it well in that show, why uh, why that matters. Yeah, and you guys can go find that if you go to djntv.com and you can go shows uh, Tuesday night with Ben Stowe, or you can just go there and type in um, wireless microphones. I believe it pops up. Of course, there's a lot of shows we've done on wireless microphones. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have. Yeah, it's uh, because, you know, like I said, it's uh, it's it's um. It's a deep topic and we've had to spend some time in it. But I guess the moral of the story I wanted to get into is that, you know, um, group one, channel one, at the end of the day, in the real world, still correlates to 560.325. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not always the same. Uh, you know, in, in uh, for a Sennheiser G1, G, excuse me, Sennheiser G4, uh, group one, channel one uh, might be... Um, you know, five twenty one dot two or something. Okay, so the, you know, it's 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 probably so. Then when all the REs though, group one channel one is going to be the same with the Electro Voice RE systems, but 
That doesn't within five H within five H. Oh. Let's take a look here at five L though, uh, and there are other um, there are several bands available. Uh, you know, five L, five H, and six uh, M are the bands available in the U.S. But here we can see that in the five L band, Group One, Channel One is four eighty eight point three two five. Mm. So if you took a five L transmitter and tried to pair it with a five H receiver, it will not work because at the end of the day, it's sending 488.325 and the receiver is tuned to 560.325. Uh, now, the reason the numeric frequency is valuable is one, it's the really the only real information. Group one, channel one allows it, uh, allows you to, to uh, use multiple wirelesses from the same uh, band and frequency together a lot easier from the same brand, I meant to say brand and band. Um, but ultimately, if you're using, you know, if you're in a very complex RF environment, that frequency is really what matters. That's sure. what tells us, uh, you know, what TV might be there, or what other wireless systems might be there, be they other wireless mics or IEMs or whatever. So, you know, when I do a wireless frequency coordination, uh, that's all in uh, frequencies. And uh, let me uh, see if I can just find a frequency coordination I've done real quick here. And... Uh, uh, let's see. What year was this? It doesn't matter. All right. Um, all right. So I'm just going to do this very quickly here. But uh, if you were in a very uh, complex uh, radio environment, you can see here that this this is all coordinated by frequency. So I would not tell you to go to group one, channel one. I would say you need to tune to whatever frequency that is, mm, you know? Okay. Uh, but in so, and you'll notice here that there are Shures, there's Telex, there's Electrosonics, there's uh, Sennheisers, there's a whole mix and match Sony, uh, and we're able to make all these systems work together by doing these comp these complex calculations. But if you were to bring your mic as a member of the press, as you are, to in that case it was a football game, I would not say go to group channel whatever. I would say John, I need you to tune that mic to. 566.750 or whatever the case would be. And you do have that option as well. There's a manual tuning option in these that's outside of the group and channel option. Hmm. In that environment, you would not scan because it wouldn't work. Sure. Uh, you wouldn't, you know, until everybody's stuff is on. And even then, uh, when you've got uh, that many wireless systems operating, um, that's just not an option. It's not what the scan function is for. The scan function is to make it easy for you and there's a small handful of wireless systems operating. Mm -hmm. hmm. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. So um, if we were going to be starting and setting this up for the first time at, an, at a venue, mm -hmm. what would we do? How would we walk me through it? I think the first thing I would do is I would just kind of get familiar with the basic things within the the uh, system. I would be mostly concerned with having a clear frequency, uh, having a good squelch setting, um, and then having good audio levels. So let's do the the 10 second version of that here. Mm -hmm. uh, first things first, uh, if you press and hold the scan button on this one, I think it will scan, but let's not do that because most don't do that. So let's do it the hard way. Okay. Uh, and this will translate better to people who are using different wireless systems. Uh, and of course, everybody does it a little bit different. Sennheiser EWD does it from an app and some you can do it with an ethernet connection. Anyway, it's all functionally kind of the same in the end. Let's press and hold the set button for a quick moment. That should get us into the menu. All right, so there we can see item number one on the menu is scan. And I think, you know, kudos to Evie because I think that's probably the most used thing on here, right? So it probably should be number one. Let's go ahead and press set again. And now it's going to ask us if we want to scan all the groups, if we want to see the results of our last scan, uh, current group, or exit. And uh, we're just going to say, let's scan them all. Let's find out what we got. Okay. And when you do that, um, so go ahead and press set again to start the scan. Just follow the directions on the screen. Uh, you can see now that it is scanning, uh, and it's going to scan through the 36 megahertz, I believe, these tuned to, and it's going to uh, find open channels. It will not rank them. It will not say this one is cleaner than that one. It will just say these are clean given the parameters you've set in the squelch, which okay. we'll get to in a minute. Mm -hmm. So does it look at how, how, say, if there's multiple frequencies together, does it prioritize, or is it just giving you these past the 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 uh, guidelines or, or the uh, 
and it could be a very only one frequency where there could be some that are like having multiple it's only pass or fail per frequency uh some wireless systems will show you the results based on how many available frequencies are within a bank mm -hmm. i.e it will show you the bank with the most free frequencies first and if you're only running one wireless mic you really only need one free frequency although right. it's kind of comforting to know you got some backups Others will simply show them in the order of the banks. So bank one will show up first. Uh, and you can see here that in group one, it says there are 14 open channels, which is fantastic because we need exactly one. So mm -hmm. we have 13 empty channels right now. Uh, just for fun with the group highlighted, press the up arrow. And uh, let's uh, keep pressing that. I don't know if we have to select the group to get that to change. Keep going. We might just have open results on there we go. <clears throat> so we can see that it did not rank these in the order of the open, a number of open channels. Oh, it yeah, there we go, 2 to 22, yeah. Right. So if you really need more, group 7 has 22 free channels. Uh, now, what's interesting about that, let me go back to my uh, – yeah, okay. So 14 is all that there is in group 1. Mm -hmm. So it's showing me all the available channels. And the bad news is we picked such a good band for you that all of your channels are open. I can't show you what happens when they're not. <laughs> <laughs> and particularly with your antennas not on, any yeah. interference that's out there, you're not really receiving. So mm -hmm. we're getting somewhat false results here. Uh, but anyway, what we would find is that if we uh, pressed set and went over to the channel, uh, that it maybe wouldn't count up consecutively. It might go one, two, three, six, you okay. know, because some of those might not be available. In this sure. case, they're all there. Everything's open 100%. So uh, let's change out of group one, channel one, just because that's where we are. So go anywhere else. Okay. Sure. So uh, what we're going to see now, if we go ahead and press set, is our frequency is going to change. Uh, if we go back down to return and go to exit. Two, two, two. Oops. oops, oops, oops. Oh, scanned I, again. I'm scanning. Sorry. I thought so it was, let's I, talk about scanning. Yeah, I thought, I, I thought it was I, – what I'm feeling what I'm seeing are two different things, obviously. Yeah, it's tough. I know you're, you're trying to keep this on camera and look at it. So uh, anyway, moral of the story, uh, you know, that – We'll see that this will change on the uh, on the front. Um, we'll just use this to show the current list function. Yeah. And uh, if we didn't change it, there'd be nothing to sync over. So, you know what? Uh, do this. Uh, turn your handheld on. Turn your. It is a handheld, right? Yep. Yeah. Turn your handheld on. Okay. And we are okay. What what are we on there? Group one, channel one. Yep, one one. Yes. You're really living on the edge, John. Yeah. I I actually I think we did actually we we used this one. Uh, the you know I had I picked up a, to do that system that that ceremony system, and when you know scan, scan again real quick before you tell your story, and then you can tell the story while it scans. I'm gonna have you scan again real scan quick. Scan with so. the with the uh, the re uh, receiver. Yeah, you can only scan with the receiver. So, but but I want you to have your tra your handheld on. Um, yeah, let's so just go. Uh, all groups. Okay, scan all groups. Yeah, there you go. Um, because what should happen now is uh, go ahead and tell your story. Yeah, yeah. So so we you know picked up the the idea that there would be multiple because I had ceremonies where they were talking that they would need multiple, and then when you know we get them there, and then the officiant the the singer, somebody's like yeah i don't need a microphone i don't want a microphone well wait i have them i was going to just get them ready for you no i'm sorry yeah so it's like well they can stay in the box until i get that cool box or that mounting kit anyway um and it's always good to have spares uh i leave tomorrow for uh some out of town shows and i i have more mics than i need mm -hmm. um, that's better than having less mics than i need uh, and if one fails, um, you know, and it can happen, right? Uh, so I'm using a, a, like a Countryman E6 ear set. And um, if I'm bringing two, I need one for this, uh, for this uh, famous actress that's speaking. 
Uh, and uh, I just don't want to be caught with that one. So Certainly. never yeah. a bad thing to have more than you need there. You know? mm -hmm. All right. Now, what we should see here when this scan result finishes is because group one, channel one is taken. We oh. no longer have 14 available. <laughs> look, what you, available. look what you were able to do. Excellent. Yeah. So it's uh, we're going to create some interference. It does not know that that belongs to you. It could belong to the DJ in the next room over. It could just be anything. It doesn't care. It just says, hey, something is transmitting here. I got to avoid that. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice that the first available channel in group one is channel two because group one, channel one is taken. Mm -hmm. So let's just go ahead and set that to something else, anything besides group one, channel one, which you can no longer choose now. A good note here, by the way, is to make sure your handhelds or your transmitters, body packs, whatever, are turned off. I, I'm seeing that, yes. Because you may give up a perfectly good frequency. And if you're one of these cities that I mentioned earlier, uh, Chicago, Atlanta, Seattle, whatever, you might want uh, – hold on, you're getting, getting oh, carried oh, away oh, 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 oh. Okay, so – Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna have you go a different way now yep, this yep, time. Yep. Okay. Uh, I was thinking you wanted we wanted to do the return. Right I now. did, but you know what? I don't I don't want to <laughs> scan for the fourth time. So, uh, so go down to uh, frequency now, please. Mm -hmm. Press set. There you'll notice that we now have the ability to tune manually. Uh, you could change the frequency five six six dot seven hundred instead of just a group and channel. Mm -hmm. So that's where you would change your frequency manually if you're using coordinated frequencies. Uh, let's just go ahead and press set and a few times to get out of there. And now let's go to group channel. Skip that because we already did that. That's yeah. where we would just change group and channel. Okay. Let, let's go to squelch. The squelch is basically a radio noise gate, and it's going to not allow any signal below a certain threshold to pass through. So... Put simply, I can be very, very picky about what frequencies I allow to come through by raising my squelch, but so doing will also shorten my range because as my transmitter gets further away from my receiver, the signal strength will decrease. Sure, makes sense. So conversely, I could get the most range by taking my squelch to, to a lower setting, but I will also allow more interference. In other words, it's a balance. Now. There are people out there who are saying, well, I have XYZ, Mike, and it doesn't have squelch, and there's nothing to mess with. No, that's true, but what it does have a squelch. It just has a fixed squelch. Okay. <laughs> you don't have the Formula One steering wheel ability to navigate a complex spectrum. Uh, now, you can just leave this alone. You know, Evie has picked zero as a squelch, and you can certainly not touch squelch. So you can use it as though it didn't have a squelch setting like your other mics were talking about but you could if you need to. And it's a rare occasion, but it happens. There are times customers reach out and I say, you know what? Sounds like somebody's in your sandbox. Let's try to, let's try to squeeze them out a little bit. Let's use some squelch. So we could raise or lower that squelch setting. Uh, and on the EVs, uh, I believe it's measured in DBs. Uh, go ahead and press the up down arrow. Let's just see if what it so shows. Yeah, it's not showing the dB value, but okay, yeah. So we're just going to see it as plus minus numbers. You'll see it in slightly different ways on other microphones. Some like the Sennheiser EW100 only have three settings, low, mid, high. Um, the EW300s, on the other hand, have uh, have it within, I think, three decibel chunks or something. Uh, I really don't pay attention to the nuances between all the different mics because, you know, it just is what it is. So. Sure. In this case, we'll probably just leave it at zero. I think that's a perfectly happy number. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll just know that any radio signal below zero, as measured on the meter to the left, uh, is not going to be allowed through by the gate. Um, and the gate also works in concert with something called a pilot tone, which is an inaudible tone that your transmitter sends so that your mic knows that that is its transmitter. Uh, all right, let's go press the set button. Yeah, we didn't change anything. They just told us that. So, yeah. Hey, you didn't change anything, just so you know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go down to number five. Uh, mic config. Let's see what's in here. I, it'll be like Christmas. I don't know either. Okay. Sensitivity. Uh, so this is telling us how sensitive the uh, mic preamp located in your handheld is. So a louder person, we're going to want to turn it down. A quieter person, we're going to want to turn it up. And the way we're going to know where that should be is with that AF meter to the left of the screen. Uh, we're going to want that probably about 
two thirds of the way up, give or take under normal use. Uh, if that AF meter is pegging out, you got to turn that sensitivity down. If that AF meter is really, really low, you're going to have to turn that sensitivity up. Now, with the EVs in particular, very important to note, we're changing the sensitivity on the receiver because it's a bigger, easier screen to navigate. But until you sync it, you haven't changed anything in the transmitter, and that's wow. where the sensitivity actually lives. So, John, mm -hmm. let's change the sensitivity value to something. I don't care what because it's not my mic. <laughs> Let's just go Perfect. to zero for now. Great. Uh, so when we go to sync, that will now change your transmitter sensitivity to zero dB. Okay. And you'll make those adjustments based on the meter. Uh, if the signal is really, really strong, and this could be in the case of maybe an instrument on a body pack. Mm -hmm. So maybe it doesn't have as much to do with the handheld, but there we could use the attenuate function. And that's going to click in a pad of 10 or 20 dB. Uh, that's going to attenuate or reduce that signal by that value. So it's a big chunk. And uh, the two states there are just going to be on and off. Uh, I forget if it's 10 or 20 dB, but mm -hmm. you know what? It's in the manual. Uh, yeah. So anybody that cares to know, they can go read the manual. Um, all right. And then RF power. <coughs> this mic has two transmit power states, which again is in the, in the transmitter. But we change the setting here and then sync it over. Low on the EV is 10 milliwatt. High is 50 milliwatt. So uh, for a handheld indoors, I'd probably go low. Uh, for a lav pack outdoors, I'd go high. Hmm. Uh, now you might say, and we've talked about this in other mic shows, but you might say, why don't I just leave it on high all the time? Well, because you're actually making a lot of problems for yourself there too. If you have a lot of mics going at high all the time, blasting away, you're just pumping out a ton of RF noise. You can get reflections off things in the building. You can get what's called multi-path cancellation. Uh, start creating, you know, RF nulls. Uh, you can create intermod problems, uh, which is when uh, mics harmonize to create phantom frequencies. So more isn't always better in this case. So we have that option here. You know, we can go low, and if we need more power, we can go high. And auto off is just going to turn the thing off. We're going to skip that. So let's keep okay. pressing the down arrow and see uh, what uh, Oops. what we what else we got. Uh, key lock, that's going to keep people from screwing with your stuff. <laughs> uh, okay, so mic display, check that out. Let's see what you can do here. You can change uh, from group and channel to frequency. Uh, and again, this is going to show what, you know, to okay. tell us where what's going to be displayed mm -hmm. on the uh, transmitter. Okay. Sync config. This is a biggie because all the things that we did or did not change, we can choose whether or not we want to sync over to the to the transmitter when we use that infrared sync. So press that and you're going to see some check boxes. Uh, and, and it looks like everything is checked, but you could say, I don't want to sync frequency for whatever reason. Uh, so you can selectively choose what will sync over. Maybe sensitivity is one of those things. You know, you're like, I don't ever want to change that. You probably do. But anyway, you decide. Mm -hmm. Right. All right, uh, so let's uh, go ahead and get out of that. I do like that it tells us nothing changed. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, let's see what else we got here. I think that's it. Oh, that's it. Okay, then let's uh, get out of that menu second. setting. Let me just make sure. Exit without save. Yeah, exit without. Ugh. Either way, yeah. fine, fine. Okay, so, so nothing config, else on the up downs there? Save settings. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, exit, exit. Uh, let's okay. go to save settings. So okay, yeah, now uh, now we're back at the top menu. There we go. Mic config, you know, okay. volume. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and go to volume, and that's where we saw that zero on the front. Uh, so sensitivity is in the transmitter, volume as they call it, uh, or Sennheiser calls it AF out, and different again, you know, different nuances between different brands. That's that zero dB we saw. This number will change based on the mixer's mic preamp that you're plugging into. So your sensitivity will change based on the mic you're using and the person that's using it. This number will change based on the receiver that we're plugged into. Okay. Uh, for now, we could just leave it as zero. Uh, you could change it if you want, uh, you know, but without having a mixer connected, uh, wouldn't be much to, to do here. Uh, let's see what else we got. Oh, RX output level. Um, Let's, uh, let's, let's jump in there. So that, that uh, volume we just talked about, yeah. uh, we have mic or line settings. 
If I'm going into a mic preamp, I definitely do not want this to be at line level. I'll be blasting that thing away. Uh, so here I can change that by a magnitude of many, 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 many dB, you know, uh, not just a few. So let's leave it at mic. I'm probably going into a mic preamp. Antenna power. Uh, this is a goodie. Uh, if you are using active antennas, uh, then you would have antenna power on. And what this does is it sends a DC voltage over the antenna cable to power an active antenna. Uh, in your case, I think you're just using the half waves that came with it or maybe Correct. a passive fin. Yeah. You do not need this. I would okay. turn it off. I would say off unless you absolutely need it. Uh, no reason to have it on any other, just, you're just pumping out DC power into nothing, uh, and, and potentially asking for some trouble. So, uh, all right. Key lock we talked about, you know, it's to lock people out. Keep, you know, let's not do that because we don't want to lock ourselves out of the mic. Uh, all right, let's go to, uh, a display option. There you can see, we can change our brightness and contrast. Those are both just fine. However you want to change yep. them. Okay. Uh, we reset. don't really want to reset because we did change some things. Uh, and uh, then now we can exit. There we are. So uh, appears I was wrong. You can't change the name on these. Uh, my mistake. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Um, anyway, now we've got our handheld turned on. Yes. <clears throat> and we can see that it is not synced. We can see that there is no transmitter on with the little X by the antenna symbol. And mm -hmm. we can see there's nothing on the RF meters. So three things telling us it is not synced. If we look at our transmitter, I believe it's on the opposite side from the menu. You'll see another little symbol that looks like the one on the far left of the receiver. You're right there. Yep, perfect. Line that up uh, so that those two symbols are pointed at each other, the one on the receiver and the one on the transmitter, and about eight to 12 inches apart. It's not a perfect science. Uh, some, let's call it six to 12. And uh, press the sync button. Okay. And that should start flashing. Yeah. And it says it is syncing. I don't know if you're, if you're gonna be able to do this with uh, holding it up in the air, we'll have to see. Uh, looks like, uh, no, nope. So that slow flash means it did not successfully sync. Okay. Uh, you can go ahead and put it down if you want and just give it a try. Try to try to line those windows up, make sure nothing's covering either window with the finger or anything and, uh, give it a rip again. And it's that, that tiny little, little hole yeah. right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I didn't need to push anything on the microphone. Uh, I don't think so, but you know what? Now, you, now that you said that, I'm like, do you? Some of them you do need to activate the sync. So I'm getting a slow flash again. Okay, so the syncing did not pair. Correct. All right, uh, let's see. I don't think you need to do anything in the receiver on these. Um, maybe try, uh, make sure they're pointed at each other because it is light, it's like a light beam. Uh, and maybe try uh, shortening the distance a little bit. Okay, I'm about four inches. Okay. And of course it's saying sinking again, as it has been. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know it's not gonna work because we're on live TV. Yeah. <laughs> now like I'm, we... I'm just not getting it to uh... All right, no problem. Uh, we'll have to figure that out. But in the meantime, I can show you why we can we can get around that by just going to the menu on the transmitter. It's like we like we planned this. We didn't, but we'll just pretend we did. So uh, we can go into the menu on the uh, transmitter itself. Okay, let's just do this and 
Let's see. I'm going to try to get this so it can be seen here. Um, It'll be easier once it lights up. So uh, go ahead and uh, slide the menu. There you go. There we go. All right. Uh, and you can uh, press and hold that, uh, that set button. And there we could change our frequency so we could match it uh, numerically to what it says on the receiver. That doesn't sound like any as much fun as just going and changing. You could also do it as a group one channel four. Yeah. Yep. And this isn't as much fun as syncing, but. Uh, so now we should see if we look at the front of the receiver that we do in fact have the uh, RF signal there. Yep. So you can see that it is synchronized now. It shows check, our check. battery. Uh, you can see that it shows the battery strength. You can see it shows it's on antenna A and that we are synced and we are live. So this microphone is now operating. If you talk in the mic, we'll see the AF. Hey, hey, check, up. check. Woo. Yep. So there you can see it. You can see it bouncing up. We also saw that RF meter dip just ever so slightly. And again, it's noting notable that we, uh, one, are in low transmit power and two, you don't have antennas on. Yeah. So... Uh, but that's a good example. That's a good way to look at to see what would happen if that signal were to get, uh, you know, interrupted in some way. Uh, and when it becomes a problem is going to be largely determined by our squelch setting. Sure. That makes sense. And some people had asked about the squelch setting and that if it was, if that was engaged too much, if that would um, make it so if people were too quiet into the microphone. If they were speaking too quietly into the microphone, that they wouldn't be picked up. Um, it's not the how loud you're talking; it's how strong your radio signal is. Ah, okay. Uh, I apologize. One second. This was a little nine one one call here for me. So, uh, uh, yes, you would. You want extra sprinkles on the ice cream? Exactly. Yeah, I'll have to play with that sink. Uh, some of the folks, uh, and thank you guys for being with us. Uh, some folks are make has to, must have the book out in front of them. Speaking of, yeah, and I don't. So yeah. good for, if you have the book out, bear with me. I'm going from memory, and remember, I know I have to know a lot of different wireless systems. But yeah, speaking of ice cream, uh, one of our uh, new additions to the NLFX family got me this for my birthday. So uh, nice. I, I, they must uh, must have did their research before joining the team. They know me well. So. <laughs> So, so let's take a look at uh, a couple of more of the menus that are on the uh, transmitter itself, if we can. Yeah, let's give a rip. Uh, I don't, um, I don't recall from memory. Those who yeah. have the book out, you're you're going to be way ahead of me here. But uh, let's see what else we've got. So we got there. That was the, we have our frequencies, and then we had our groups. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, there's that negative six dB we were talking about. Yep. So there's your sensitivity setting. We so change that that would have oops, I, and there's your RF power and you'll you'll notice that that's in low right now we could change it to high um, you know low, if yeah. we wanted to okay uh, low will also give you uh, give you um, longer battery life because it's using less energy to transmit oh yeah can you can you see that when I when I kick it up too high that it uh, the little uh, uh, broadcast tower there in the upper left hand corner. No. Yeah, yeah, it changes its symbol. Yep, so you can Fancy. you can tell just by glancing at your transmitter to see what it is. So, okay, and then no change once again. So, so we can once we once we get that syncing figured out as far as how a person can do that. And it might be that I have lights that are just because of it being a light source. I've got I've got lights shining right in this area that could be interfering also with it. Um, with that. I've seen that happen. I've seen sunlight do it too, because again, it's a TV remote, basically. It's an infrared beam like a TV remote. Uh, so yeah, it could be uh, the lights you have in the studio. It could be, uh, it's obviously not sunlight here. No, yeah, no, not, right so, not so much. But I've seen, I've seen that be an issue too. So just a note to viewers, uh, and I've seen this happen with lots of different brands. Try to shade your mic from the sunlight if you're trying to sync it outdoors. That can definitely be the thing. So it wouldn't be possible without... In order for the the receiver to adjust the transmitter, that only can happen when they're synced. I mean, as far as I could change it on the receiver, and then I have to bring the microphone or the device over and then sync it, and then I can send it back, and then they'll be in sync. I can't change it on the fly. Right, unless you change it on the transmitter, because then you're changing it live. The, yeah. the sensitivity lives in the transmitter. The RF power lives in the transmitter. No need to sync at that point. Gotcha.
Okay. It's just, again, the, the, the benefit of the sync really is just that you have a little bit bigger, easier to read menu, and you can send over all those settings at once. Uh, but otherwise, we just saw, here's what happens if we can't sync. No problem. We're still operating. Uh, life is just fine. Mm -hmm. so. Excellent. I think we've gotten through our, our, all of our menus. Yeah. It, you know, and there are, um, there are other mics that have um, really deep, detailed, complex menus. Uh, you know, the network edition of the AT3000 fourth generation. There's complete software packages for it. Uh, some of the Sure systems, uh, SLXD now has been added to the wireless workbench family, but also QLXD, ULXD, uh, Axiant, you know, uh, Sennheiser's EW300 uh, and 500 series, where you have really detailed and complex software controls and monitoring we can employ. Uh, but as we saw, bang for the buck, the EV is a really great wireless, very well featured, robust and simple. Um, you know, and and uh, and easy to admin on those two places. So, moral of the story again is that you know everybody does it a little bit differently, um, and and I, and I think the things that we walked through here are translatable to these other brands um, and models, but they might be just slightly, or even dramatically different in how they do it. At the end of the day, though, the settings mean basically the same thing. Sure. Excellent. Well, thank you, Ben. That that's good to know because especially those of us who own an RE three system, it would, you know, kind of nice to know what all those little bells and whistles can do. Yeah, I'd be comfortable with the RE three any day. Uh, you know, that's another. Uh, people ask me all the time, "What would you get?" There's uh, there's a lot of them I'm really comfortable with. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not like one's great and the rest are terrible. Uh, there's a lot of great options out there. I I would have no problem using an RE three, not not one bit. So, and for those of you who are interested in uh, checking them out, I yeah, love the sound of that mic. Yeah, we I got I picked up some. Uh, I you you had a deal on the 420 wired mic uh, when they came out, mm -hmm. and I jumped on those, and I loved that. Oh my, those are just incredible. So I had to go wireless and do the 420 with the wireless also. But the link for that is down in the description below, so you guys can go check them out and find out more information from the NLFX Pro website. And viewers. Be sure to mention this jockey news and when you're talking to your favorite NLFX rep, we'll get you a little better pricing. So uh, not that we don't want you to pay a full price, go ahead, but I'm just telling you, you don't have to. So uh, drop us a note and we'll uh, we'll give you a little savings since you endured watching the show for 50 minutes. So so uh, speaking of savings, well, before we wrap up here, because we're going to say everyone's got to run out, uh, Jay and, right. and Brian. I do have one more note about the 420. I'll just okay, throw please, it for you. Okay, please, please. Yep. I feel, I feel like this might be a better spot for that. I just yeah. wanted to tell you, John, since you love the mic, I do too, 420 and 520, but I really love the 420 in particular. Uh, we did a, a sort of a mic shootout of sorts at a worship conference I was speaking at, uh, mm -hmm. and it wasn't really a shootout. It was just really talking about the different types of mics and how they sound. And uh, people were blown away. The 420 just crushed them. They were like, wow, that's a great sounding mic. We had a, uh, um, a, a Christian recording artist uh, sort of uh, trying to break into the bigger time, but is at least, you know, doing some things, do some singing and, and uh, has a great voice, was very consistent, and people just were blown away at how that 420 sounded. Mm -hmm. And then when you got up there and sang Elvira, people were like... They left. <laughs> and, and there were tears. It was, it was so beautiful. Yeah, there was tears, all right. Tears, uh, tears. Listen, there's a reason I stay behind the mixing board. <laughs> Um, okay, so before we wrap up here and send you guys to djntv.com slash chill for, for the hangout tonight, Black Friday is coming up here in just a couple of weeks. Are, are there going to be something, some things out there for people to be kind of checking out that NLFX is going to be able to do for them for Black Friday this year? There are some. Uh, I, don't, I don't think uh, I need to tell people that there's supply chain problems. We talked about it last week. So uh, there isn't much. You know, uh, manufacturers are just not desperate to get rid of anything right now. Yeah. Um, but there will be a few. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some great little uh, streaming video switchers that are going to be on there. Uh, I think uh, there's a few other things from uh, and, and if I remembered, I would tell you, I just, I, you know, our marketing team knows better than I do. But I think I think some phase things and um, there's a, there's a few things. So to keep an eye out, uh, if you're not on email, let's go to the website, sign up on the email list. Because that's where you're going to find out more information when those when those Black Friday deals start to drop. Definitely, definitely make sure you're on the NLFX email list. We don't send out a lot of stuff. We don't spam you. And what a great way to wake up from your uh, tryptophan induced coma than with some savings. So, oh, you know. exactly. That's what we're all excited to do. 
Uh, ben, once again, thank you. And thank you guys for being with us tonight. You had a great audience there. And thank you for the input in the uh, in the chat room there. So it uh, helped on a couple of those things. Uh, I think we covered most of the questions throughout. Uh, throughout. So everyone, we'll uh, let you go. And then we'll be back uh, next Monday night. Oh, by the way, Ben, yeah, we're doing gain structure mm-hmm. next Monday night. You and me. Well, somehow we're gonna we got to do the gain structure thing for the DJ the 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 monthly training night, and we're talking gear, and it's Ben stuff. Uh, all right, so uh, I will actually be on my way back from a tour show. Uh, so we're recording it. Might be. We'll uh, either that or uh, I'll figure right out right in to the do middle it. of the tour. Okay, everyone yeah. in the audience, can you please be quiet? I'm recording. Oh, yeah. this is good. Well, we'll probably have to do it at a different time, but oh. uh, I, I, uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll we make might it need work. To but... Record it s- Monday. Um, Monday's a drive day. Monday's a travel day. So we'll figure it out. You yeah, know we'll figure. It. We're going to be talking gain structure. gain structure from the road. What could be more real? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would be pretty pretty. Impressive. Gain structure is a big part of my every day. It is it's... the number one thing. Get that right, and everything else is better. Yeah, especially... if you get it wrong, everything else is harder. <laughs> it would be bad. That it would be. So we'll. we'll but be you can't. Yeah, I mean, there's a little, just a little primer for the pump viewers. I mean, there is nothing. When I when I teach live sound classes, number one gain structure you start with that because if you don't get it right there you can't fix it anywhere else true so yeah, that it is that it is so i'm looking forward to that that'll be next monday uh, part of our our monthly dj and tv training go to dj to know <laughs> djntv.com slash virtual expo that takes you to every month but that's uh, set up right now for the november event and you can see uh, how he's going to be there talking we're going to be talking some uh, studio microphones uh, on the show and some midi mapping so should be a fun night uh, go out and check that out and we'll see you guys next so week. how he tipped me off to something i know i got like 10 seconds before this show goes dark here but because you know we have birthdays just a few days apart mm-hmm. so we were comparing notes whatever but how he tipped me off that apparently big daddy is more like wwe than i knew Uh-oh. you know last week we talked yeah, about big yeah, daddy was going to use me as like a human folding chair well turns out he he's been talking to he's been talking to howie too Uh-oh. so he might be like turning on me oh so this just got really interesting this now did. it's like it's like whose side is anybody on right so i don't know maybe me and howie now are going to make an alliance against big daddy i don't i don't know this just got really complicated and interesting so oh, i didn't realize we were having so much. we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go do, go in do some survey you know interviews and find out exactly where the loyalties lie and which you know me and i'm thinking about how he who's there i mean he's like yeah right? so he's oh, like, we'll keep oh. a little recording and then uh, having some fun so thank you guys again for being there and